We saw a fun clip from The Equalizer 3 with Denzel Washington, available exclusively in theaters this Friday, September 1st. The director of that film, Antoine Fuqua, is here. Your fifth collaboration with Denzel Washington. Yeah. What's the first time you were in a room with Denzel? Can you tell me that story? Yeah. Uh, I think I met Denzel at the Beverly Hills Hotel about training day. Mm-hmm. You know, and Denzel's intense, man, you know. I was a little nervous sitting out with Denzel about the movie. Yes. And we sat down, and what was great about Denzel is that we didn't talk much about the movie. We just talked about life. Mm-hmm. You know, we talked about God and different things. And when we talked about the streets, and he wanted to just get a sense of, of me just as a as a man, as a person. Mm-hmm. And uh, by the t- I think we were there for like two hours, man, before I, before I knew it. He was like, let's do it. And that was it. So when you met Denzel, yeah. you just knew that he was o- only knew that he was interested in the project. Was he attached to the project? Well, he was, was he? attached to it. Okay, he was, I think he was circling it. I'm not sure he actually landed on it, and mm-hmm. uh, he was trying to find the right director. And uh, Pauletta, his wife, had introduced us a while ago, and she was the one that sort of initiated it. And uh, Ed Lamato, his agent, who passed away. Yes, and. Uh, uh, they said, you should sit down with this guy. I think I just done the replacement killers. Yes. And uh, Denzel wanted to sit down. We talked. We talked about the character a little bit, you know, the streets, the cops, the world. Yes. And uh, I remember telling Denzel, yeah, you know, um, some cops I know uh, just have a badge, but they're a lot like some of the other guys I know. And we had dinner with them. We got the cops together and some of these uh, street guys, some gang members. And me and Denzel went and had dinner together with all of them. And when we walked out of the dinner, he was like, yeah, I know this guy. So this was after, obviously, your first meeting. After the first meeting, Okay. Yeah. And yeah. whose idea was it to get together with dinner with the real-life individuals to— I believe it was mine. I, you, know, we, you know, Denzel knows what he knows, and I know what I know, and I just right. said, I know some friends, and maybe you want to meet them. And he was like, yeah, let's grab some dinner. And we put some SIS guys together and some gang members together. A friend of mine named Bone mm-hmm. uh, from Athens Park Bloods and all that. And it's funny because they all know each other. You know what I mean? There's no secrets on the streets. And that, I think that's where things started to click in. Then it was something different we were doing. When did Ethan Hawke get involved in this whole thing? Ethan got involved. Uh, I couldn't find Jake. Right. And, <clears throat> and at the time, the studio... They weren't as interested in, in Ethan because Ethan moved to New York. He wouldn't get his teeth fixed. He didn't want to be a movie star. You know, Ethan was being Ethan. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I, I love him, man. And I saw him one night on uh, some talk show promoting, I think, Hamlet. Mm-hmm. And I remember saying, that's Jake. Just by watching him on TV. I was like, that's Jake. Because he had, he's obviously a great actor, but he also had this um, boyish way about him. Yes. That I would believe he would be a little naive in that world and also tough enough to maybe survive it. And uh, so I got together with Ethan. Same thing with Ethan. We met at in Beverly Hills at a hotel. Yeah. And me and Ethan were together, I don't know how many hours, and a woman came over to us and said, I don't know what you guys are talking about, but I want to sit over here and, and hang with you. Because <laughs> we were laughing and talking, and yeah. you know, it was all about family and life. Same sort of thing sure. with Denzel. And, um, I called the studio and I said, I really want Ethan Hawke. At the time, they weren't as interested. And then uh, me and Lorenzo de Bonaventura, uh, who's a good friend of mine who ran the studio at that time, mm-hmm. uh, he said, well, we need some other names if you want Ethan. And uh, I said, I'm going to call Snoop and Dre. <laughs> and I'm going to put Snoop in a wheelchair. <laughs> 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 and I want Dre to play a cop. <laughs> you know, complete opposite of everything they, they're about. Right. And then they were like, all right, cool. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how Ethan Hawke got greenlit on training day. That's how he got greenlit on training day, wow. yeah, man. Did you call Snoop and Dre, and what was your conversations yeah. with them like? Well, I called Snoop. You know, Snoop's my, that's my man. I called Snoop sure. and said, I want you to be in this movie. And he was like, you know, hey, nephew, you know, you know Snoop. He's, mm-hmm. you know, of course, you know. <laughs> and, uh, and I said, uh, but I want you to be in the wheelchair. <laughs> he going to be running down the street wheelchair. And he was like, all right, I'm, I'm down for that. Mm-hmm. I think Dre was a little harder because I, I wanted him to be a cop. <laughs> and I don't think he was excited about that at first. He's so, like, 
Nah, I don't know, homie. I don't know about that one. <laughs> I was like, come on, man. But I said, but you're not going to be like a normal cop. You're going to be on the other side. And he was like, all right, that makes more sense. Okay. So that's <laughs> you didn't have to twist his arm too much. To not be too honest. much. You know, he's like, yeah. He said, I'm going to throw some corn rolls in. I said, but you guys aren't exactly the good guys. And then there's another cameo in this, if, if to call it that, Antoine Fuqua, the director of The Equalizer 3, which we'll get to in a moment, the fifth collaboration he had with Denzel Washington, um, which is still talking about the first training right. day right now. Right. Um, Terry Crews was on this program. He yeah. has hit it considerably in Great. his career. But he said he was just on the set as an extra. Yeah. And he wanted to come out. He was curious to watch Denzel Washington work. Mm -hmm. And you spotted him and put him in the movie. Yeah, I love doing that. I love doing that. Yeah, I saw Terry. Just just a big, you know, yeah. guy. And he's standing there and I had all the gang members around. Terry just had a presence about him. And I was like, you want to be in the movie? And he, he, I think he was overwhelmed. I said, I need you to take your shirt off and go on the roof. He's gonna, he gonna be flipping pigeons. Yeah, and he was like, "All right, you know." I'm sure he'd have done anything you asked. I mean, at that point, I don't know, somebody would have came to me and told me I'm flipping pigeons on the roof with my shirt off. I don't know, you know. But he was like, "Yeah, let's do it." He got up there, man, and next thing I know, Terry Crews is everywhere. So you, you know? do that frequently on your films, where you're I looking around. I love to around? do that. Okay. Uh, yeah, I did it on Equalizer Three. I love to find real faces, people to just, you know, something interesting about when they're real, when they're not actors in certain roles yes um the authenticity of who they are it's just there you know you don't have to do anything just put them in the right environment and if they don't have any fear like terry didn't you know you might find somebody that's the next terry cruz exactly i did it with a kid in training day who wound up becoming an actor writer director uh can't remember his name at the moment and i put him in southpaw i didn't know he was the same kid he was a little kid mm -hmm. in training day in the jungle and his life was going in a different direction and uh, he's one of the guys in um, Southpaw that was around Jake. And at the end of Southpaw, he came up to me and he had tears in his eyes. And I could tell he was from L.A. He had a certain swagger about him. Mm -hmm. And he said, um, Mr. Fuqua, I didn't want to say anything during the production, but he goes, I'm the kid that you and Denzel and Ethan would, like, talk to all the time. Yes. In the jungle. He said, you changed my life. And he became a filmmaker. And he's an actor now. Antoine Fuqua here on the Rich Eisen Show. Um, and again, before we get to uh, the Equalizer uh, joining us here on the program, um, what's the Denzel twist on the role in Training Day mm. that he came up with mm. and you sat there and go, that's Denzel? Is there a moment in that film that he put a twist on it you didn't see coming, wasn't part of the script, any story like that that you can tell? Yeah, man. When he said that, I was like, that's, that's Alonzo. Like, that was something that he, he ad-libbed that moment in the beginning. Uh, he was talking to Ethan. We were rehearsing. And Denzel just said it. And he just said, my And we were just kind of, the whole room froze. <laughs> and I was like, oh, yeah, we're putting that in the movie. <laughs> we're doing that. <laughs> you know? But it was one of those things that, you know, you, I saw Alonzo. He started smiling when he said it. He was so um, just devious, you know, and that I saw Alonzo. And I think that was the moment I knew that he was going to put a whole different twist on this guy. You know, the first scene I shot was in the cafe. Mm -hmm. And when he was sitting there and Ethan started talking and the way he started smiling and leaned back and started to get comfortable, I, I could see Alonzo. And those are the moments where I knew he was just on fire. You know, but the, 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 what really uh, sort of put the, the real icing on it was King Kong. You know, he was just at a, he was, Denzel was just, he was vicious in that movie. Uh, he was charming, he was seductive, but he was vicious. And when we shot that scene, King Kong, that was him. That was all him. So when you say that's all him, you mean his inflection or he yeah, came up with he the He came up with the, the line. He, I don't, he came over to me afterwards and said, I don't even know where that came from. In fact, I got one take of that, right? And I'm shooting anamorphic. And anamorphic, you know, you got to be like, my, my focus puller came up to me and he was shaking. He was like, I, I, I hope I got it. And so when I got to the editing bay, I told my editor, it was a little, it's, if you looked at the movie, there was a little bit of a buzz on it. Mm -hmm. Just the eyes, a little blurry on it. Mm -hmm. My editor said, it's so amazing, nobody's going to ever notice it. I haven't noticed that. Yeah, but I got one take. <laughs> and that came from Denzel. He was just in a certain place. 
and I just came out of them. And, and I remember a, a few gang members coming up to me going, man, he's out of here. Like, you know, it was like, when he, when he hit, the, I'll go back. Mm -hmm. When he walked outside and he said, you in the office, baby, and he hit the switch mm -hmm. in the car. Yeah, right. A few gang members, boom, I remember boom walked over to me, he goes, oh shit, man, this movie's a hit, man. Mm -hmm. This movie's gone. Mm -hmm. And that was, in the, that was the first thing I shot. But that's all Denzel. That's just his, he just put swagger on it, you know? Antoine Fuqua here on the Rich Eisen Show, The Equalizer 3. He doesn't do too many sequels, so. Never have. That's the first one. This is it, right? This I mean, so what do you think uh, it is? What I mean, your collaboration, obviously he wants you involved and you want him involved. Yeah. So, and you love being involved together. Absolutely. So yeah. what do you think clicks here? There's something about the character that I think Denzel really likes. I know he likes the idea of justice, of course. We all, that's mm -hmm. what we, we do it for. Um, there's something about the complexity of that character, the OCD, the sort of um, tortured, quiet soul of that character that mm -hmm. I think Denzel just responds to, you know. Um, he came up with the, uh, the OCD. That's something he just started doing. You know, I didn't even know what he, he he wanted a napkin. He wanted a cup, and we were sitting there in the in the, uh, the first one in the um, coffee shop, and he just started doing it, mm -hmm. you know. And I would, I just let the camera roll. I just started capturing it. It was it became a part of that character. So there's something about Robert McCall that Denzel really responds to. Uh, I mean, you'd have to ask him what that is. Sure. But yeah, you know. But what about it from you? Yeah, I mean, you. I, I love the complexity of the character. I love the idea of a dark angel handing out justice. You know, mm -hmm. and in a movie, we get to we get to give bad guys their just due. You know, uh, in a brutal way. Um, so he's sort of a um, he's a reluctant uh, savage when it comes to that. You know, and, and the Equalizer three in theaters this Friday, September first. You were born and raised in Pittsburgh, PA, correct? Pittsburgh, PA. Yeah. What would a movie on Mike Tomlin look like? <laughs> if you were directing a film on Mike Man, Tomlin. I'm trying to do a documentary now about the Pittsburgh Steelers. Okay. Mike Tomlin's a great coach, one of the greatest coaches of all time, I believe. You know? I'm with you. Yeah, and um, just a solid guy. If I had the opportunity to tell a, a story about Mike Tomlin, I'd do it in a heartbeat. You know, just a solid guy. I never heard a player say anything negative about the man. So he obviously has a certain... Um, well, have you ever met Antonio Brown? I have not met Antonio Brown. I have not met Antonio Brown. I'm just, I'm, 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 I'm fooling around here a little bit, obviously. But I, 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 I we just had him on Monday, Mike Tomlin. It's, oh, Mike, yeah. Yeah, he called in. And um, I don't know what it is in Pittsburgh. I know that they haven't won a playoff game in a yeah. while. Yeah. And obviously, they haven't won a Super Bowl since um, the one that he brought to yeah. Pittsburgh. Yeah. So, I... I, I this guy would be employed by somebody else in two seconds flat, and I'm, that's not a, a, you know, an exaggeration. Yeah. Uh, what yeah. do you think about the Steelers' upcoming season? Do you got any thoughts on the subject matter? If yeah, you... I think the Steelers are going to be uh, in the playoffs. Okay. I think they're going to do well. I think when they get their stride, they're going to be dangerous. Um, I love the quarterback. I love the connection with um, you know, Pickett and Pinkins. Yeah. Pinkins. Um, I think yeah. Najee's ready to run and do his thing. Yeah. Um, and Tomlin's always a great coach. And, and Watt is a monster. He is that. And, you know, so. He's an equalizer. Oh, for sure. He's an equalizer. That's my man. <laughs> he man. gives people fewer than nine seconds, though. That dude is <laughs> his, a, his clock starts around two. Two seconds, and That's then, it. you know, then you yep. better beware. But uh, I think the Steelers are going to do well, man. You know, if they stay healthy, and Tomlin is obviously a great coach, uh, I think they're, they're doing this. You know, they're doing this, and I'm really excited about them. Who is your favorite Steeler of all time? Frenchie Fuqua, my cousin. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to ask if there's any sort of, you know. Yeah, that's my cousin. Okay. Yeah. My favorite Steeler, I mean, if I'm being honest with you. Yes, sir. It's hard because back in the day, they were they were all fantastic. You know, Lambert, Mean Joe Green, and all these guys, Lynn Swan, you know. They were just incredible athletes during that time. You know, Franco Harris. Love Franco, you know, but yeah. you know, it's hard to pick one. I, I, I'm friends with Marshall Falk. I've worked with him forever and a day. And one of my favorite stories Marshall tells me 
is that they were taking on, once upon a time, the Rams were taking on the Arizona Cardinals. Right. And Mean Joe Green was an assistant coach on the team. And they had a running back who, you know, was running his mouth on the, the Rams. You know, whenever he would get a first down, he'd right. be on their sideline and running his mouth. And right. Marshall just got really pissed about it. So Marshall did a Marshall thing, which is, you know, score on him. Right. And as he came up with a big play, he started screaming and yelling at the entire – Sideline went up and down the went up the sideline and just gave everybody the business. And he realized he passed by Mean Joe Green while giving the business. Oh. And he went back to him and he said, "Not you, Mister Green." <laughs> <laughs> smart man, that's right. <laughs> like he caught himself in the zone of giving crap back to the team. So he went funny. back to him and said, "Not you, Mister Green." That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Those guys were incredible, man. Jack Lambert, come on, man. Well, I mean, every single summer we see Mel Blunt at the Hall of Fame, and he's yeah. wearing a cowboy hat every time. Yeah, and that makes him look eight feet tall. Yeah. And every single time I stand next to him, I think this is why they remade the rules. Yeah, because if he is this big now, at his age now, yeah, what must he have been like in helmet and pads back in the day when you can grab people? Yeah, when you, you know? can really. Do really, some damage. you can do some Slam damage. Slam them, do whatever you want. Yes, sir. Yeah, I remember, man. I used to watch all those Sunday NFL highlights. You know, I was, I was that kid in Pittsburgh, man. I love football. That what's your favorite? Kid. I mean, uh, what's your favorite Denzel film that you did not collaborate with him? Oh man, on which Malcolm one? X? Why is that? Because Denzel doesn't look anything like Malcolm X, and you believed every single moment of that moment. That he was Malcolm X, mm -hmm. and that's that. That's to Denzel's, you know, credit. And Malcolm was like, you know, light skin with red hair and all that. But you watch Denzel as Malcolm X. I bought every second of it. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's my favorite. Equalizer four in the mix. What do you think? No, no. I'm this is it. That. This is it. This is it, Rich. Okay. This is it. Might be a prequel, maybe. Okay. Oh. I mean, I don't know. Oh, okay. But I'm saying if it's going to be one with John David, that would be incredible. I love that idea, but you know. Not with this hell and me right now. I remember again, I think I might have told you the story last time you were here. If, if, if I did, I apologize. You know, when John David was uh, playing with the Rams in mm. preseason football mm. years and years and years ago, this is before apps and streaming right. and, you know, an NFL network showing all these games. Right. Uh, we got a call saying, you know, hey, because I was on the set uh, hosting the preseason action saying, right that there's no way for people to see the St. Louis Rams in Los Angeles play their preseason game. You know, Denzel Washington's coming to the, 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 the studio to watch his son. And I remember watching him watch his son for a little bit. I didn't, I didn't know what the hell to say to him, to be quite I, honest I'm with you. He couldn't have been nicer, couldn't have been more down to earth. Right. Just like any dad watching his son play preseason football in the National Football League, what a feeling that must be. Yeah. And now seeing what he's become, his yeah, son. He, he's a movie star. He is that. Yeah, he's a great like, actor. Must be in the genes, huh? Well, his other son, you know, uh, Malcolm just directed his first movie. Fantastic. His daughter produced it. His other daughter is an actor. I mean, it's like fantastic, man. It's a dream. You know? Well, I appreciate you coming on here um, and chopping it up with us. You can come back anytime. Thanks, Rich. Honestly, appreciate like it, we'd, we love uh, having you here. It's been too long. I think it's The Equalizer long. 2 was the last time, Yeah, which is part of the reason why I'm asking if there's a sequel, and I know I'm going to get you back. <laughs> I'm back, man. We can come back and talk Steelers. Anytime. Okay, let's do that. Let's have yeah. you in during the season. Let's do it. This is coming. Right, uh, Antoine Fuqua here, or Fuqua here on The Rich Eisen Show. The Equalizer 3 is in theaters near you this coming Friday. Catch The Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel. 12 to 3 Eastern for free.